Hey everyone. Uh, so we're going to start a new video series here. This is going to be different than what I normally do or normally show. Uh, what we've got is a Volvo Penta um, Marine Outdrive. It's a model 290A and we're going to be repairing, rebuilding the upper gearbox. Um, and it's going to be multiple parts. Uh, there's a lot of detail to show. Apologies in advance. <laughs> um, this first part is actually just the overview for anyone who's not familiar with the Volvo Outdrive. I'm just going to point out what the different components are and so forth. So those of you that are familiar with the Volvo Outdrives, you probably want to just go ahead and, and advance to, to part one of the, of the, repair, of the repairs, rebuilds. Um, and I'm going to try to title each segment with um, the particular task that's involved because there's going to be, right now it's looking like maybe five parts. Uh, there's a lot of footage to, um, to edit. I've got about oh, at least 12 hours of footage to try to pare down into uh, a handful of say 20 to 30 minute videos. Um, but if you're actually going to rebuild one of these, you're going to need all these details. Um, so just a little backstory. So my father, dad, he rebuilds a lot of these. Um, he's done hundreds of them. Okay, and I help him occasionally, and I do a few. Um, uh, he's the real expert, um, but his shop is not the setup is that great for doing filming and so forth. So I. I'm taking on the uh, role of uh, uh, doing the step-by-step -step, uh, 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 instructional, if you will. Um, we do do a bunch of these, um, and I'll put contact information in the description. So if you want to get a hold of Dad or I, if you if you got one of these you need rebuilt, um, we do do them. You know, for a fee, of course, um, and you get an idea of what's involved. It's Really not that complicated of a transmission, but the the details in the adjustments and the and the shimming and the settings and so forth is is the critical part. And there's a and there's a couple of weaknesses that need to be addressed in them as well. So so okay, let's get into this and uh, probably see you at the end of the series. All right, thanks for stopping by, guys. <laughs> Okay, I'm guessing that not everybody is familiar with the Volvo Penta AQ series outdrive. So I've got a scrap unit here. Uh, we've, we've got our gearbox that we're working on, but the, the rest of the unit is basically a scrap unit. Um, so uh, this is a model 280 single prop. Uh, so anyways, again, this is the upper gearbox here. Uh, this has the forward and reverse shifting in it, and this is what we're going to be working on. Uh, there's an intermediate housing, which is basically just a spacer and an attachment point for that attaches to the stern plate and, and of course, the boat. <laughs> uh, shifting uh, linkage cover, and then the lower unit is down here, okay? Um, this one, the reason it's scrap, or I'm saying it's scrap, is the uh, it got drugged down the road. Uh, so the prop was was rubbing on the road, beat the prop up, and the skag is ground about 50% off. Um, I'm pretty sure that the gearbox and bearings and everything are fine, but it's a 215 gear ratio, which is not very popular. Um, that, um, okay, so this is a 280. Oh, and we're going to be working on this upper gear unit. Now, you can remove this upper gear unit without removing the outdrive from the boat. There's a way to do it. Uh, I'm going to put a link in, down below. Shift cover, I, I, nothing's bolted on, just have stuff sitting here. Okay, I'll take that off. Of course, the shifting linkage is missing. Included it with your, with your shifting linkage um, is this uh, transfer rod here. And what that does is when you shift into reverse, 
When you shift into reverse, it, it engages a latch that keeps the outdrive from kicking up because normally it's designed to kick up in case you hit a log or a rock or something, you know, while you're, while you're motoring. Okay, now this model is, does not have the hydraulic lift, it's got the screw jack lift. So see this plunger right here? So the screw jack lift that raises the outdrive pushes down on here. The first thing it does is releases the latching mechanism to unlatch the uh, outdrive. And then, you know, through the, through the screw jack it will raise your outdrive up. So that's what this is for. Okay. Uh, there's no bolts in here, but normally we have nut and washer each side here on these studs that holds it on. And you've got a couple bolts on the inside here that hold it on. Uh, of course, you've got to disconnect everything else, bellows and so forth. Um, but then uh, your upper unit just lifts right out. There you go. Okay. All right. So... Um, I'm going to put this on the bench. We're going to talk about this in a couple of minutes, but let's talk about the uh, the rest of it first. So this is your raw water connection. Let's see, it's already been removed. This is your exhaust bellows connection point, where your exhaust goes out along with the water cooling water return. Your shifting cables mounts up here. Bearing sits in here. There's the spline shaft down below. There's a coupling that drops in to connect the two together. I don't I didn't have the coupling in there because I just just assembled this for demonstration purposes. You'll have an O-ring here and an O-ring here. Okay. This tube is the oil return. Alright. Um, in normal operation, down in the bottom gear um, assembly. There's a pump, an impeller pump, that pushes the oil up right around the drive shaft or the input output shaft, up through the bearing, through the upper gearbox to the very top, and then the oil goes back down this oil return line or, or tube, I guess would be better. It only pumps oil when you're in gear. So when you're idling at the dock, <laughs> there's no oil being pumped through the, uh, the the upper gears. Uh, the oil level is up in here somewhere, uh, so there is some oil plus splashing and so forth. But if you're charging up your battery or running the engine for other purposes, and you've been idling for more than say 10-15 minutes, you want to put it in gear. Make sure you're it's safe to do so. For a couple of minutes, let some oil circulate, and then you can put it back in neutral. Yeah, just don't let it idle for long periods of time um, in neutral, because you won't have any oil circulating. Okay. All the gear reduction takes place in the lower unit. The upper gearbox is one-to-one -one ratio. There's no gear reduction in the upper unit, so all the gear reduction happens down here. So if you're um, uh, replacing one of these, you want to make sure that you match your gear ratio or get the gear ratio that you're looking for that will work with your prop and power combination. Okay, um, so I don't forget, guys, you've got to pull the prop every year when you're done boating for the summer or whenever it's convenient during the year, pull the prop, grease the spline, inspect it, put it back together. This one here, that was neglected. This prop is frozen to the shaft. Okay, this single prop, dual prop is much more complicated. So in this unit, there is a pinion gear and a bevel gear driving the propeller shaft. Okay, in a dual prop, you've got a pinion gear and two bevel gears and a coaxial shaft with two propellers okay all right so anyways this video we're we're concentrating on the upper gearbox so enough said about the lower end what i'm showing here is all the models from a 250 all the way up through a 290a 
use the same bolt pattern and same uh, bearing registers uh, pocket here and the output shaft spline uh, all match up. The exception is when you get up to the later models um, that would be uh, like an A1 or a B1. So it'd be 290A1, 290-B1. They use a different bearing. Uh, they call it the integral bearing. Uh, I call it the big bearing model. So those are not interchangeable. So if you have one of those later models, you have to stick with the later model upper gear assembly and a later model intermediate housing for everything to match up. Uh, but if you have one of these earlier models from a, from just a regular 290A all the way down to the 250, you can interchange the gearbox assemblies. They'll bolt right up and, and work. Of course, you have to get your shims right, but they are interchangeable. So if you have a, if you have a 270 or a 280, for example, and you want to make a stronger unit, you can put a 290A upper uh, and it'll f match up and fit and work just fine and you'll have a stronger unit, but you have to get your shims right. Okay, so just to recap, so the lower units are pretty dang reliable, especially the low gear ratios like this one, the 215. Uh, the biggest enemy is if you get water in the lube, um, make sure you follow your um, uh, drain and refill intervals. Uh, I would recommend at the end of the boating season, drain the gear case. If, the, if your lube is clean and no signs of water, which would be milky color, put it back in. If it's milky at all, um, replace it. Um, if it's very milky or you actually get water, you need to address that right away. Obviously, first get the water out, get some new lube in there, run it, circulate it, probably drain it again. Um, but uh, if you address these things, as soon as there's an issue, you'll be good or you'll be fine. If you let it go, you're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> okay. All right, so enough said about the bottom end. They're, they're pretty solid. The upper gearboxes are, are maintenance. I don't know that. And we're going to talk about that in a minute.